Good morning. Okay, I think I start again. Good morning. Today is Saturday, Revelation Saturday. This is May 20th, 21st, 2022. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. May 21st, 2022. Uh, good morning. My name is Dr. Lucy Altman. I will be the moderator for this class. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international honest hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as the result of a divine vision and divine revelation given to the founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. The school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Classes are held in Canada, United States, Bahamas, Jamaica, England, Ghana, Zambia, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. Yahweh has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. Yahshua has been erroneously substituted with Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our creator Yahweh chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in His pure spirit state, He is incomprehensible, inscrutable, and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in His pure spirit state symbolized on this Moses chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son. 
a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name, Yahshua, and title, Elohim, may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a court roundabout. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the old covenant and to write the new covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the gospel. In this school, we have 10 primary aims, uh, 10 primary constitutional aims and objectives, which are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seven, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby men must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace and our slogan is speak the truth. This morning we will have a prayer to dedicate the meeting by Dr. Diane Garrison of Springfield, Ohio. We will have a song by Dr. Carlton Gordon of Jamaica. Uh, we will have a uh, scripture lesson, which is Revelation, the 20th chapter, read by Dr. Teresa Baker of, uh, I believe, of Springfield. And our scripture readers today for Revelation Saturday are uh, Dr. Jackie McCain of Chattanooga, Tennessee, and Dr. Marie Winters of Arkport, New York. May we have our prayer, please. 
Yes, yeah. thank you. And we want to give all thanks to Yahweh, our creator, for bringing us together today and for his divine mercy that he has to give us a chance to obtain eternal life through salvation, which is dedicated to us through his son, Yahshua, the Messiah. And as we listen today, we want to ask that we gained more knowledge and wisdom so that we can proceed through the rest of this life that we have on this earth with absolute confidence that he is with us all times, every, every day, every breath that we take and every step we make. Thank you again, Yahweh, for giving us this divine vision and revelation and imparting unto us this divine knowledge. We thank you for all these blessings in the name of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, thank you. Hallelujah. 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 All right. Ready for the song? Can you hear me? Thank you very much. Please continue. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice i hear falling on my ear the son of yahweh discloses and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. He speaks, and the sound of his voice is so sweet, the birds hush their singing. And the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. And he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there. None other has ever known. I'd stay with him in the garden, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go to the voice of woe, his voice within me calling. And he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, and the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. I'd stay with him in the garden, though the night around me be falling. But he bids me go when it's time to go, his voice within me calling. And he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tear breathe there none other has ever known none other has ever known hallelujah hallelujah thank you hallelujah hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. first joshua <clears throat> good morning brethren I'll be reading Revelation, the 20th chapter. I'll be reading that from the Holy Name Bible. 
containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by the late A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. That's Revelation chapter 20. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. And I, saw, and I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of men that were beheaded for the witness of Yahshua and for the word of Yahweh, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his idol, neither had received its mark upon, the forehead, upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death had no power. But they shall be priests of Yahweh and of the Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nation, nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the sons about and they and the beloved city and fire came down from Yahweh out of heaven and devoured them. And the adversary that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone with the beast and the false prophet and shall be tormented day and night for the age. And I saw a great right throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yahweh, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which, which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That was Revelation chapter 20. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We welcome everybody come out to study with us today. We wish to thank all of our participants for the beautiful prayer, song, and that scripture lesson. And I will now turn this back over to our host, Dr. Lenore Allen. Good morning. I'm very glad that we're all gathered here together. And I'm going to turn this over to Frank. Lewis of Springfield, Ohio, along with his beautiful wife, Valerie. Good morning, Frank. Good morning, Valerie. Good morning to most and good afternoon to some. Praise Joshua the Messiah. Uh, this is Revelation Saturday. We've been doing this since, uh, boy, I think October 2020 or something like that man um so and we're in revelation 20 now we do have newer people 
we always want to emphasize that the teaching that we're teaching is a school and not a church, and it came by way of a divine vision revelation given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in the year 1931. And he said what really happened, he received Yahshua the Messiah, which is the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and this is the judgment of the world. And uh, Yahweh, at the end of every age, and before we came into class, we never knew anything about ages and dispensations. He always sends one to close out the age or to um, tell about the age ending. Okay, and uh, and he has to give somebody the truth uh, or yeah, so that he can so the world can be judged, really. Um, and so that the, so that souls can be saved. That's the main point. Uh, uh, when you were born physically, it was a gift from Yahweh and uh, you didn't do anything to be born and you couldn't give him thanks because you don't have that capability when you're a baby so when you grow up uh and then you come in contact with this it's time for you to uh, examine the things that are being said okay and so uh this revelation 20 that we're in uh, we do have newer people so we will be doing a few different things but uh uh we'll say this um so here's the ages and dispensations chart. And matter of fact, today, last, I mean, uh, this week we were going over a transcript called Conception and Birth of Yahshua the Messiah. And this was Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley preaching, and it was uh, 1966. And matter of fact, he left off, where we left off was uh, Revelation 20 at the end there. And some people say this Revelation 20, uh, hasn't happened yet in some places. And that is a major error and mistake. And we'll get to that because that's right at the beginning there. So, um, hmm. so read 20 and one, and then we'll try, to, we'll try to get started. And I will say this, something about the Bible, and I've been uh, listening to this, we've had a trip uh, last week, uh, uh, and I was listening to this tape, and Dr. Kinley explained the Bible, or, you know, the sections of it, and what he said was, was, uh, you know, of course, most of us know this, but we do have newer people, um, in Isaiah 8 and 20, it says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there's no light in them, and Yahshua Messiah is the light of the world, and that means there's no Holy Spirit in, in a person that can't go back to the law and the prophets and teach you. And the law is the first five books of the Bible. And that's what the credited to Moses. Uh, that's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And then the next 34 books of the Bible from Joshua to Malachi, what they call the Old Testament, are the next 34 books of the Bible. Um, uh, that's the prophecy or the testimony. Then Yahshua Messiah, when he was walking around in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, living, you know, born, uh, living, uh, going into his ministry, uh, fulfilling, dying, and bury, resurrect, the sin. Um, that's called the biography because it's written about his days in the flesh. It's also the fulfillment because he's fulfilling the things that was uh, written about him in the law and the prophets. Then Acts is a historical document. <clears throat> and he called Romans through Jude, he called that <clears throat> instructions and corrections. And you can see it when you read those things, but you never saw anybody break down the Bible like that. I never have. Then people say Revelation is a companion book to Daniel. And he said, well, one thing uh, that I've never heard anybody say is that it's a companion book to Moses. And it is. And really, when you look on the Moses chart, you know, you'll see that Moses is on top of Mount Sinai. And 
he has a, a that's Yahweh Elohim giving him a vision and uh, so the Bible began with a man having a vision and he wrote five books and the Bible ends with a man having a revelation and he wrote five books and that's declaring the end from the beginning so this teaching is a vision and revelation. So it really takes a vision and revelation to understand the Bible. And I'd never, and it's true, to sum up Revelation and say that's a companion book to Moses. And really, he also said in the Elohim book that it was a condensed version of the law and the prophets. In, in other words, it confirms that, uh, that the same Holy Spirit did reveal himself to Moses and the prophets by divine vision and revelation and it all goes together and it can be put together and uh so this so uh read uh that being said read uh revelation 20 and 1 and then we'll be working with uh well we'll work with it Revelations 20 and 1, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Okay. Made, is that the, is that all the first verse or is there more? Yes, that's all of the first verse. Okay. That's all we need. Okay. So he said, and, and, and that's another thing. <laughs> okay. Read Genesis 1-1. One, one. You got me a picture. Thank and, you. I don't know how you did that. And in Genesis 1-1, one, one, it says, uh, in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And then it says, what's the next verse in verse 2? Uh, well, it'll say, uh, in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And, and, and the earth was without form and void. And yeah, every was. verse down there has and. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and. And we were taught in school, you don't start a sentence with and. <laughs> but that's the way uh, it is. And you'll find out that when Moses saw it in Exodus 24, you'll see a lot of and before, before and after. Um, and then in Revelation, you'll see uh, in Revelation 6, it'll have and. And then 7 starts with and. And 8 starts with and. Revelation, these chapters, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. And they're starting off with the word and, showing that it's a continuation, just like when you... Uh, it's a continuation. The Holy Spirit's revealing these things. And then 21 says and, and 22 says and. So, uh, and we, did you ever have anybody point that out to you? No. Mm. So it says, and I saw an angel come down from heaven. Oh, now what she had on the chart there is a 40 plate chart. And, uh, uh, and if you look at it, you have a tabernacle pattern. And that's the most written about thing in the Bible. And really, you can't understand the creator without this pattern. And it had a most holy place, holy place court round about. Then the next plate, the Osphys, the divine wisdom. And you have these attributes, uh, but they're not in a shape. Well, they're, uh, well, look, uh, and then you have the kingdom. And then you have him taking on shape and form, these attributes. Well, that's, an, that's Yah, when Yahweh took on shape and form as Elohim, and then he starts creating the universe, or he created the angelic and the physical creation. That's an angel coming down from heaven. Uh, get the name chart, please. Uh, uh, read Revelation 1 and 20. Uh, well, I want the bottom of the name chart. Yeah. So if you look at the, Yahweh's the father, uh, he's pure spirit. It says it's Yahweh is spirit, substance, essence, formless. And you have scriptures there and you have pure spirit. That's his first state. Then when he takes on shape and form as Yahweh Elohim, it's still within Yahweh. It's still, it's still the same spirit because that's all uh, that's what he is. So he takes on shape and form as Elohim. That's a super incorporeal form. 
And then he comes down in the physical form as Yahshua the Messiah. And that's what you have in John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the word. That's Yahweh Elohim. And the word was with Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh. And the word was Yahweh. You can leave the chart that we had there. Uh, all things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. Mm -hmm. uh, in him was life. Mm -hmm. And that life was the light of men. Then in John mm -hmm. 1, 14, it says in the word that Yahweh Elohim was made flesh. We had the name chart there. That's what I was wanting. That, that it's showing that these three are one. And that's what First John 5 and 7 says. There's three that bear record in heaven. The Father, that's Yahweh, the Word, Elohim, and the Holy Spirit, Yahshua Messiah. And these three are one. Mm -hmm. one. That's the unity of the Spirit. Okay. And everything testifies to that. And one of the examples that can be used is like an underwater. You have or H2O. H2O, that's what water is in a liquid state. Uh, water is, uh, but it is H2O. Well, it's H2O in the gaseous state uh, with water vapor. Uh, it's H2O. And then it condescends into uh, a liquid H2O. And then you can freeze the liquid water and it will be ice it's still h2o in all three states to show you that he's yahweh elohim yashua and these three are one and you know they can exist in your house because you have water and you have h2o in the air you have the h2o running through your pipes and then you have h2o in the freezer if you've got ice in there and they're all existing at the same time uh and it's all H2O representing that it's Yahweh existing as Yahweh uh, the Father, uh, Yah as Elohim, the Word or Son, and as Yahshua, the Holy Spirit. And these three are the one spirit of Yahweh, but he's able to condescend and exist in all three states at the same time. Okay. Um, hmm. You want to so, show us 120? Yeah, sure. Now, you'll see that when in Revelation, one of the first things he saw was he saw that uh, what, uh, the one like in the Son of Man is standing in the midst of a seven branch lampstand. And it said in his right hand are seven stars. OK, uh, yeah. Read one and 20. The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand in the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven assemblies. So the seven stars are the seven angels of the assembly. So he's equating stars with angels. Okay. Now, and, and when we see stars, the sun and the stars, and do you know that the sun that we see every day is a star? <laughs> and what that sun is representing is the only begotten sun which is Yahshua, or as we say, the word or son, which is Yahweh Elohim. See, when he comes, he's the only begotten son, or see, Yahweh's the father. You got to go over to the left. You can't, uh, that's the physical son. But for to have a physical son, there must be a spiritual son. And so when Yahweh, who is the father, takes on shape and form as Elohim, who is the word or son, that's the only begotten son. That's the only one that come from pure spirit and took on an organized shape and form. And son means second state. Father means first state. And so it's the only begotten son that made the physical son that you see in the sky. So that physical son that gives life to everything, uh, natural life is testifying to the spiritual son. And where that son is a star, uh, it is a star. Um, when you, the scientific guys will tell you that the sun is a star. And we call the sun and the stars, we call them heavenly bodies. Well, when they saw Yahweh Elohim, they said it was the body of heaven in his clearness. So that's the, he's the angel of Yahweh. How do you know that? He said, because remember we're reading Revelation 21, I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Well, in Exodus, the third chapter, 
uh, you might as well read that. And that's what we got at the burning bush there on this chart here. <clears throat> read that, please. Exodus 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Elohim, even to Or. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. So here's the angel of Yahweh appearing to him. It says the angel, just like you have the sun. <laughs> All those stars are suns too. But, but when that sun resurrects or, you know, when the sun rises, aren't all the other stars clothed within the sun? Mm -hmm. So it's showing how that the angels are in the clothed in the body of Yahshua and Messiah, the ones that kept their first estate, we'll say it that way. So the angel of Yahweh, and, and you'll find out, well, this is by our, this divine vision revelation. Uh, uh, he told Moses, I've seen, uh, where's that? Is that five or six? I've seen the uh, uh, how they've been afflicted down there in Egypt. And it did say, and when Yahweh saw Elohim call. Verse uh, seven. Yeah, yeah, read three and seven there. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. That's right. And read the eighth verse. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now he said, be... I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Well, didn't, it, didn't we read in Revelation 20 and 1, I saw an angel come down from heaven. So the angels appear and say, I am come down. You see how that is? You got to use the charts. It's you know, Well, it's in the Bible. I, you know, remember, That's one thing about it. You can write down the scriptures, but it's always... You know, that's one thing about these charts. You know this man had a vision revelation. There's no way he could make these charts. Uh, so when he says, I'm come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, uh, and he says, and to bring them up out of the land into a good land and a large and a land flowing with milk and honey. And that's what Joshua did. There was a man called Joshua. That was Yahweh in a body down in Egypt. He's the one that delivered them out of Egypt. Then he's the one that uh, 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 transfigured before Moses so he could see that vision. And how do you know it's him that did that? Because he fulfilled it when he was Yahshua the Messiah in Matthew, the 17th chapter. See? Uh, and then, uh, boy, <clears throat> and he, uh, he's the one that's revealing this pattern. And that's what you see at the top of the chart. Elohim, the archetype, original pattern of the universe. You might as well read, well, uh, read uh, uh, Exodus 14, 19. This is the children of Israel coming up out of the land of Egypt. Now he said, I'm come down. And he, and he also said, oh, and the, what's, what does three and 10 say of Exodus? Same read. conversation. Yeah, come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. So he said, come now. Come means he's down there. You understand? In Egypt. And I'll send you unto Pharaoh. And that's what you read about. Yahweh said unto Moses. Yahweh said unto Moses. All when he poured out them ten devastating plagues. And then Exodus 12 and 1, it says, and Yahweh said unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, mm -hmm. And, uh, and you have those ands again. <laughs> and Yahweh said unto Moses. And you know, he said that in, what does six and one of, of Exodus say? Six and one. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said unto Moses. And Yahweh said unto Moses. What does seven and one say? No, six and one say then. Then. Okay, what's seven and one say? And. And. And Yahweh said to Moses, right? Eight and one. And Yahweh spoke unto Moses. Nine and one. Then Yahweh said unto Moses. Okay. Uh, ten and one. And Yahweh said unto Moses. Eleven and one. And Yahweh said unto Moses. Twelve and one. 
And Yahweh spoke unto Moses. And Aaron in the land of Egypt saying, showing he's down there in the land of Egypt, Yahweh. Well, how's he down there? How's he speaking to him so much? Because uh, he's in the body of Yahshua the Messiah. I mean, Yahshua the son of Nun, which in your Bible is called Joshua the son of Nun. Okay. Mm -hmm. But there's no J in Hebrew. The letter J is only 400 years old in the English alphabet. So if there's no J in Hebrew and he's dealing with the Hebrew people back there, then his name wasn't Joshua back there. It was Joshua. See, uh, and these are things you can look up and know for yourself. Uh, and so, uh, and then the letter J is only 400 years old in the English alphabet. So it's impossible for his name to have been called Joshua back there. And he said, Moses wrote of him. So uh, his name couldn't have been Jesus over on that side. Uh, you know, what they call Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. His name, his, never, his name never was Jesus. His name is not Jesus and it never will be Jesus. Uh, same way with Lord God and Jesus Christ. Uh, those Bible writers never uh, heard of a Lord God, Jesus Christ, never said Lord God, Jesus Christ, never wrote Lord God, Jesus Christ. You know, I heard him say that and I was saying, wow, that's deep. <laughs> it's powerful, you know. And it's simple. Okay, read Exodus 14, 19. Well, I'll read 13, 21. Might as well read 13, 21. 13, 21. And Yahweh went before them by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead them the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light to go by day and night. So Yahweh's leading them out of Egypt uh, as a pillar as a cloud by day and as a pillar of fire by night. So they were always in the light when he's resurrecting them. Now read 14, 19, when they're coming up out of the land of Egypt here. And the angel of Yahweh, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillow of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. And it came yeah. between the... Yeah, continue. And it came between the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them, but it gave light by night to these, so that the one came not near the other all the night. So you see how the angel is leading them, is in the cloud leading them? Mm -hmm. And so well, that's Joshua. Uh, uh, well, he's the one leading them, and he says the angel of Yahweh. Because the angel appears to Moses and said, I'll send you on the Pharaoh and I'll bring you up out of the land of Egypt. Now read Exodus 23, 20. Hmm. Behold, I send an angel before thee. Mm -hmm. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Mm -hmm. So you see, he said, behold, I send an angel uh, to keep thee in the way. And then Yahshua Messiah say in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Why is no man can come to the Father but by Yahshua? Because he's the only one that come from the Father in righteous. So that's the only way to go back. And so he's the one knowing the way. So he said, I'm going to send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. See, read on. And to bring thee into the place which I have prepared, beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. For my name is in him. See, uh, so, uh, so you have Yahweh is the father and Yahshua is the only begotten son. See how his name is in him? Because Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. So his, his name is in him, see? And then in Exodus 24, 9 and 10, you might as well read it there. Then went up Moses mm -hmm. and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and 70 of the elders of Israel. And they saw the Elohim of Israel, and there was under his feet, as it were, a paved work, the sapphire stone. And as it were, the body of heaven in its clearness. 
and upon the nobles of the children of Israel. Yeah, it says in his clearness, but the holy name will say it's, and so do some Bibles. You understand? Because they don't understand it's a, that that's the only begotten son or that's the him. And so it's a heavenly body, a spirit body, got hands, feet, and a body. Why do they have to see the creator there, the Elohim of Israel? Because that's when he's going to bring Moses up into the mount and show him how he transfigured into this pattern back into himself and see the creation come in in six days and the seven day he rests. And Moses was up there 40 days, 40 nights. So if seven days took up the creation, uh, 40 minus seven is 33. And so 33 days, he showed him that tabernacle pattern, the most written about thing in the Bible. And, uh, and, that, and, and that right at the top of the chart, it tells you that Elohim is the archetype original pattern of the universe. He's the spirit pattern, but he shows Moses this pattern in a vision in Revelation, tells him, and that's Yahweh Elohim transforming into every vessel of that tabernacle to show that he is the pattern. And he makes Moses thoroughly understand that. I mean, 33 days is a long time. Uh, why? Because you can't mess that up. And so when Moses comes down, they ask him, well, what did you see when you was up there? We thought you was dead. You was up in that fiery cloud. You didn't take no food up there. You understand? And so when he comes down, uh, well, he also came down with the first table of stone and saw him build the golden calf. And he cast the table of stone down and broke them. And then he tells him, well, in the beginning, Elohim created the heaven and the earth. And they're writing it down by the way he's saying it there. And Yahshua the Messiah is right there with him, or Yahshua the son of none. I got to say that. He's the son of none, none of the flesh. You understand? Uh, uh, he's right there. He's right there listening to uh, uh, what Moses is saying. And Moses leaving out some things. Didn't say where the man was made of and all kind of other stuff. That's why you got Exodus, the second chapter. Exodus, the first, I mean, Genesis, the first chapter only has Elohim all the way through it. Mm -hmm. And until uh, Genesis, the second chapter, they says Yahweh Elohim. Because that's what he had to take Moses back up and, and, and perfect, you know, show him. Because, you know, you'll forget some things. And also that one trip's of representing the vision and you really need the revelation and that's what that third trip was it's representing Yahshua which is the revelation okay uh so when he say he saw an angel come down uh so that's one thing that people don't realize and it was set in this school a lot of times because we go back to Moses quite often in this school <laughs> and this chart's one of the most used charts we have uh and so when he saw an angel come down from heaven that's Yahshua the Messiah coming down to deliver the children or coming as Yahshua, the son of none. He's instituted. Might as well read that. Read Revelation. I mean, uh, Hebrews. Well, read Hebrews 12, 1 and 2. No, let's do it this way. Go to the prophets and go to, I think it's, uh, go to Daniel about 6 and, uh, well, Read Daniel 3 and about uh, 23, maybe try that 322, where uh, you had, and that's, uh, that's another thing to learn too. You had three Hebrew men named Shad, well, they were called, really, they were Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Read the first chapter, Daniel 1 and 7, just read that and we'll kind of go down to the Daniel 1 and 7, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. He gave unto Daniel the name of Belteshazzar and to Hananiah of Shadrach and to Mishael of Meshach and to Azariah of Abednego. So what you have here is You've got uh, Babylon changing the names of the Hebrew men. And all them Hebrew names had either El at the end of their name or Yah at the end of their name. Mm -hmm. So in Daniel, the third chapter, you've got uh, 
uh, Hananiah, he doesn't change him to Shadrach. You see that? No, Yah. And then Mishael changed him to Meshach. And then Azariah changed that to Abednego. Well, that's what happened with your Bible. Yeah. The true name, Yahweh, the title Elohim and the Holy Spirit, Yahshua. And they done took that out of the Bible and put Lord God Jesus there. You understand? You see how Babylon puts you? And Babylon means confusion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the ways he confuses you by taking the names out. And then when you hear the right name, you say, well, you know, I, anyway. so the, what this story is in Daniel, the third chapter, is that the Nebuchadnezzar built an image and it was 60 cubits high, six cubits wide. When they play six instruments at 666, if you didn't bow down and worship it, uh, then you'd be thrown into a fiery furnace. Well, uh, 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 Hananiah. Uh, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, or as it's in here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't bow down to it. They said, hey, Yahweh's able to deliver us, but if he ain't, we still ain't going to bow down and worship mm -hmm. <laughs> And then they threw him in the fiery furnace. They got hot, threw him in the fiery furnace. And read uh, and uh, read about 323, 24. Try 324. Let's do it that way. Daniel 324. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, true, O king. He answered and said, lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like the son of Yahweh. So you see that uh, the, the fourth one down there, he, in other words, he sent his angel to deliver them, <laughs> which is Yahshua the Messiah, okay? Now, same thing happened in Daniel, the sixth chapter, except a different, you know. In other words, you got them, they're good as dead thrown into a fiery furnace. They're buried in there, then they resurrect with no harm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And Yahshua's there. Well, that happened with da with. Uh, Daniel, he's thrown into a lion's den in the sixth chapter. And then uh, they sealed up the two, uh, sealed up the lion's den with him and with the lions. And then uh, uh, early in the morning, read about 322 maybe or somewhere around there. We ain't going through the story. We're just telling you what. Okay, now, uh, yeah, read 22. 622, Daniel. My Elohim has sent his angel. Now, if you look at the holy name over there to the left side, see, they done switch six and eight. So it'd be 822 if you got a holy name Bible. And he did it because chronological purposes. But now here's 322. It says, uh, read on. My Elohim has sent his angel and he shut the lion's mouths that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him, innocency was found in me and also before thee O king so you see yahweh elohim sent his angel and have shut the mouth the mm -hmm. lion's mouth so you see this angel coming down yes having the key to bama's pit in other words uh bama's pit's like you can't get out of bondage out of egypt on your own it, mm -hmm. it took the angel to deliver them so you see this angel delivering them they those guys couldn't uh you know you uh, uh they, that fiery furnace would have burned them up if Yahweh ain't sent his angel. You understand? And then the lions would have eat Daniel up if he ain't shut the mouth of them lions. You see that? Mm -hmm. And so when Yahshua Messiah comes down, that's the, you know, uh he's the angel of Yahweh and he comes into a fleshly body, you understand, to be this the savior of the world. Okay, because he's the only begotten son. That's what it says in John 3, 16. He's the one telling uh, Nicodemus that the whole um, Yahweh so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And said so he didn't come in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. But the world's condemned already because it hath not believed in the name of the only begotten son of Yahweh. That's John 3, 16 through 18. Now, when Yahshua Messiah died, and, and even when he died, to show he was the son of Yahweh, uh, 
Well, when he died, the, the sun went down because he's the real sun going down for the sin of the world. And then the S-U-N went down in reflection of that. You understand? And when there was a great earthquake, that soldier said, oh, he said, truly, he was the son of Yahweh. There ain't no way the sun was going to be pitch black dark from noon to three o'clock. You understand? And, and, you know, you'd think that was the end of the world if it was nighttime from noon to three. And uh, it was the end of the world. It was the end of the post-Diluvian age. You know, he was bringing that age to an end there. See, and he's dying for the sin of the world. And then you'll read, uh, what, what is 20, just read 28 and 1, maybe, of, of Matthew. Uh, uh, 28 and 1, in the end of, excuse me, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sufferer. But behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of Yahweh descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone from the door and sat upon it. See, now there was a great earthquake when he died, and there was a great earthquake when he resurrects, and the angel rolled away the stone, just like they didn't he roll away the uh, Red Sea <laughs> so the children of Israel could deliver it. Did it and it wasn't it the angel or Yahweh Elohim? Didn't he roll the waters off the face of the earth so that the seed of vegetation could come forth? You mm -hmm. understand? Uh, so you see how he's sending his angel? Now, so uh, get the charts and just uh, zoom in on Yahshua Messiah on the Moses chart. And so what it said is, uh, so when John's out there on Isle of Patmos and he says, uh, show Yahshua when he resurrects. Uh, blow it up. So you have Yahshua die, bury, and resurrect. So read 20, 20 and 1 again of Revelation. And uh, 20 and 1. And also get other person get Revelation 1 and 18. 20 and 1. And I saw the angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. So he said, I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of Bob's pit and a great chain in his hand. Mm -hmm. Now, see, that's what's in Yahshua's hand there at the resurrection. That's a key in his hand. See, so he's the angel of Yahweh that come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit. Well, what's the bottomless pit? Well, he's the one that delivered them out of the land of Egypt. You understand? They couldn't get out on their own. And all those souls that had died from Adam to, uh, you know, John the Baptist getting his head cut off. You understand? They're, those souls, that's a bottomless pit. They can't resurrect on their own. It takes the resurrection of the life. Yahshua Messiah said in John eleven twenty five, 25, I am the resurrection of life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet yeah. shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die, believest thou this. So he's the resurrection of life. So when he dies and is buried, when he resurrected, he didn't resurrect alone. He resurrected with all of them souls. You understand? And matter of fact, the first three feast days under the law, April 14th, the feast of Passover. That's when Yash Messiah died. He's the true Passover lamb. April 15th, the second feast day. That's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yahshua is the true bread. He ain't risen yet, so he fulfills unleavened bread. Then April 16th, on that Sunday, when he resurrects early in the morning, that's the, the Feast of First Fruits. So that's when they would have their feast days. That was the barley harvest that was harvested on April the 16th. Well, what Yahshua Messiah did in fulfillment of that, he harvested 4,033 years of soul. Now, that's doing some harvesting, ain't it? <laughs> that's what them physical feast days was to represent is the gospel of Yahshua Messiah uh, through the preaching of Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. Your soul can be, uh, uh, well, can be harvested into the spiritual body of Yahshua the Messiah. Just like you take, well, you know how they harvest and put it in a barn. What's well, representing uh, being uh, harvested and then Pentecost 50 days later is the fourth feast day and that was the that was the wheat harvest <laughs> the first fruit of, that was the wheat harvest and so uh, he harvested souls by pouring out the Holy Spirit and that's what began this age 
So he saw an angel come, uh, and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key to Bama's pit and a great chain in his hand. Get the elementary chart at the top there. And Dr. Kinley showed, uh, uh, now, and don't these uh, elementary chart at the top there, uh, you got these circles there and they look like a chain. I ain't see it yet. You got, you got to see your arrow going over there. Just hit the elementary chart. That's the Moses chart. Yeah. Okay. So here you got the chart on the pattern of plan of salvation. You see how it's showing, uh, well, that's Yahweh Elohim there uh, from eternity. Uh, and then you see how these, how, how those circles are linked together, just like a chain, ain't it? And it's showing like a chain of events. You understand? Uh, and so it, it, everything's linked together. Uh, he comes out of pure spirit. You got the chaotic state, uh, 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 but it's the Holy Spirit that transforms that chaotic state into an organized creation. So you have a death burial, resurrection ascension then he comes in since the fall of adam man's dead and buried so he got to come in and die and bury and then he then you even have on the next circle resurrection and ascension see him overturning and see how everything's linked together death burial resurrection ascension he pours out the holy spirit then the devil rises up and got people believing false doctrine and false prophets that, that man's in a death burial state uh, but he always does have somebody with the truth. That's what that red part is talking about. And then, uh, then, then, he, then, he, then you got judgment, resurrection. That's where we're at the end now. You're being, this is the judgment of the world. Your heart can be resurrected. And if you've been resurrected in your heart and mind, you're going to ascend with an immortal glorified body and be one of his angels. See, and so when you go the dispensation ages, Dr. Kimley said that great chain in his hand is representing how he's got these dispensation and ages all linked together. You understand? Just like the links on a chain. You understand? Uh, and so that's an angel coming down. That's Yahweh uh, Elohim through his son, Yahshua, having an eternal purpose. Matter of fact, you might as well read that. Because some people, see, some people, when they think of the Savior, they just think he was a man who just walked around for 33 years. You understand? Uh, read, uh, well, might as well read Ephesians about three and three and five, uh, and then read nine through 11. Ephesians three and three, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote a four in a few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of the Messiah, which is which in other ages was not made known unto the son of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit. Now you see that, and the, and the second verse said, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of Yahweh, which is given unto me to you, or did you ever hear about any dispensation of grace until you come down to the school? <laughs> how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. You see how it takes the Holy Spirit to reveal unto you the, the and by revelation the mystery? And that's why, how do we know these things? Because that's the beginning of this age. And at the end of this age, a man said he had a vision and revelation from the creator. And it's, and it's a mystery, the things that are being taught, see. Where he says, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of the Messiah. Just like when you read the Elohim book, you'll know that man saw that mystery. And then and there was a revelation directly from Yahweh. Nobody could write a book or put these charts together like you see here, which in other ages, was not known to the sons of men. What do you mean other ages? Uh, as it is now revealed on his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit, the Holy Spirit revealed it. See, in other ages, go back to dispensation ages now. See, they... Uh, uh, so these other ages, 
it, the Holy Spirit hadn't been poured out yet. See, that's why this age is completely different from the other ones. See, mm -hmm. after his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, out the Holy Spirit, he's now poured out the Holy Spirit. So that's how he's revealing this mystery by the Holy Spirit through vision and revelation. See, and that's what John's writing there. See, uh, 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 okay, read nine now. Keep the charts. Three and Revel nine. Yeah, Ephesians there, yeah. And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in Yahweh, who created all things by Yahshua the Messiah. Now, he, the Yash, did you know Yahshua Messiah was the creator? They wasn't saying Jesus Christ was the creator back there in the church, was it? Well, that's what it said. That's a mystery. They want all men to know that, that Yahweh created all things by Yahshua Messiah. He's the creator. That's what makes him the only one that can be your savior, because he's the one that created it and is responsible for his creatures that he created. See, these are great mysteries, ain't they? Mm -hmm. uh, read the 11 verse, uh, ju uh, just because I, I want to try to move on. 11, according to the eternal purpose, which he purposed in the Messiah, Yahshua, our Savior. In so, so you see how he, 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 he purposed an eternal purpose through Yahshua, the Messiah? And that's why I talk about he sent his angel <laughs> with the key. Uh, and he says, uh, and, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, but he still was in heaven. Yeah, you might as well read that. Read uh, John 3 and 13. This is Yahshua the Messiah. Uh, well, you might as well read it, yeah. John 3 and 13. And no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven. He no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that come down from heaven. Read. Even the Son of Man who is in heaven. See, even the son of man who is in heaven. So he's down there in a physical body on the earth, but he said he's in heaven. So that's an angel coming down from heaven, but still being in heaven, <laughs> walking on the earth. Lady. You understand? That's a great mystery. And in the 14th chapter, he said, you believed in Yahweh, John, 14, John, John 14. Mm -hmm. He said, you believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. Well, mm -hmm. no, he said, uh, let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. You believe let in not, Yahweh. Yeah. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in Yahweh, believe also in me. Mm -hmm. so you believe in, in Yahweh, father. you should be believing in his son. You understand? Uh, my father's house was many mansions. If it wasn't, so I wouldn't told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there. There you may be also. Well, where was it? He's, he's, he's in heaven in a physical body, filled with the Holy Spirit, knowing the purpose and plan of Yahweh. Well, what happened on the day of Pentecost? And he's the son of Yahweh on the earth. Now. So on the, when he poured out the Holy Spirit, they became sons of Yahweh, filled with the Holy Spirit, walking on the earth plane in heaven. Yes. See that? <laughs> These are great mysteries. The Holy Spirit's revealed. See? Okay. So, uh, okay, okay. Uh, so, 21 said, I saw an angel come down, uh, uh, and I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. That's these dispensation ages, how they're linked together. It's one way he explained that. You know, <laughs> he know he had to have a visual revelation to be able to explain things like that. Okay, read 20 and 2 now. 20 and 2 of Revelations. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Now it said he laid hold of that dragon, that old serpent, called the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Hmm. Yeah, we do have newer people, so I better. Okay. They, now the whole world says this ain't happened yet pretty much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, one thing is they don't know prophetic time. Uh, now you see, it says, and he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. Okay. 
Now, you, you might as well read 12 and 7 of Revelation and come down a little bit. And uh, because it's going to say the dragon, that old serpent called the devil and say he's the one with the many names and titles. Read on there. Revelations 12 and 7. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceiveth the whole world. Yeah, he was cast out. And, and that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole, he was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. And you see that when they fought against Michael's angels, they prevailed not, neither was their place found anymore in heaven. They were cast out, never to return. And that's really the purpose of Yahweh, that he made a physical creation, made mankind in his image after his likeness. Mankind has a soul. And he's saving souls to take place of that one third that was cast out of heaven. See, uh, and and where were they cast out? Well, read uh, uh, well, uh, oh boy, read Second Peter two and four. Second Peter two and four. For if Yahweh spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So he cast them out of heaven, see. He spared not the angel that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Uh, so that's what's causing all the hell on the earth is those demons that are in mankind causing them to raise hell down here on the earth. And, and some of us, well, before we came into class, uh, he was working mightily through us raising hell. I know I'm not, in my case, I'll say it that way. I was raising hell. <laughs> that's real stupid. So it said delivered into the chains of darkness to be reserved under judgment. Now look at, get the ISI chart and look at the mystery of iniquity and you'll see chains over his head. And didn't it say, I saw, uh, uh, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he ended up, uh, it said, and put him in, he cast him out. You know, he's Yahweh spared not the angel's sin, but cast him down to hell and put them in everlasting chains of darkness. See that? Uh, okay, now go to the Moses chart. So now uh, read Ezekiel. Hmm, I think it's about 29 and 3, maybe. Read Ezekiel 29 and 3. Ezekiel. Now, yeah. 29 and 3. Speak and say, thus saith Yahweh Elohim, behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt. I'm against the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And this is in the prophets talking about Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Read. The great dragon that lieth in the midst. Oh, he's a great dragon? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I probably shouldn't do this, but I'm going to go ahead anyway. <laughs> go ahead. Name, get the name chart. Now, do you see where the devil was cast out? That, uh, that, that old serpent, that yes. great dragon called, uh, called Satan and the devil, which deceiveth the whole world. And he was also called Lucifer, right? Yes. Well, look at Lord. L Lord could be an acronym for Lucifer or devil. He's the one that took Yahweh out of the Bible and called, he wants you to call him Lord instead of Yahweh. Then look at God. God is great old dragon. See, see yeah, you got, yeah, he's the great old dragon that took Elohim out and put God there. You understand? That ain't man doing that. Uh, it's the spirit. It's the satanic spirit trying to hide the truth. Now, Yahshua is the only name of salvation. And he doesn't change 
Yahshua's name to Jesus. Well, who's that? Well, in Hebrew, there ain't no letter J, so you can knock the J out. And then there ain't no vowel, so you can take out the E and the U. What do you got left over? SS. Those are satanic spirits. <laughs> <laughs> ain't, that what, ain't that what a serpent does? It hisses, don't it? <laughs> okay, we got to move on. All right, go, go back to the Moses chart there. So he calling Pharaoh that old that great dragon that lies in the midst of the rivers well that's what pharaoh's representing he's fair uh and you know what it said that he laid hold of that dragon that old serpent and the devil and 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 bound him what read 20 20 and 2 again and then we'll show what the, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. Okay, now we got to figure out what the thousand years is. So now, you, uh, mm, well, uh, well, go to the elementary chart, and we're just and and those the three scriptures that are on the tombstone is the ones we're going to read more or less. Uh, if you look at the tombstone, there's three scriptures there. And you'll have Genesis 5 and 5, Psalms 90 and 4, and, and uh, 2 Peter 3 and 8. Because it talks about bound a thousand years. So we got to know what that thousand years is. See. Okay, I got Psalms 90 and 4. Does start with. Okay, okay read that please. Okay, 90, verse 4. For a thousand years in thy sight but are but as yesterday when it is past and is a watch in the night. So it's saying a thousand years in Yahweh's eyesight is as yesterday as when it's past and is as a watch in the night. Okay. Now, okay, read Second Peter 3 and 8. Second Peter 3 and 8. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with God. So the Holy Spirit saying beloved. Now, see, people read the Bible and they say, see, church, it says beloved. But he ain't loving them because they don't understand what he's saying. <laughs> he's talking about ones that have been taught by the Holy Spirit. They're the beloved. We've been taught all these things in this school by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Beloved, believe not. Oh, no. Uh, beloved, be not, not ignorant, ignorant of this, this one thing. thing. He don't want you to be ignorant of one thing. <laughs> beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. And people are ignorant of it. So, you know, they must not be beloved because they're ignorant of it. But he's telling them, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. Read. That one day is with Yahweh as a thousand years and a thousand years as one day. So one day with Yahweh is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. And see, and that's what we show in this school. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. One day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. Well, this one, so that, so really that, and what we do or what we have done, and we do have newer people, we take the days of creation that was shown to Moses, since Yahweh said one day with Yah Yahweh is as a thousand years, we take each day and show the thousand years of time coming down. And then it says, beloved, be not ignorant of one thing, that one day is with Yahweh is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So really that thousand years that he bound the devil, uh, you understand, and bound him a thousand years, that's really just one day. See how that's a mystery? And that's why the world said that ain't happened yet. Um, that is just one five. Uh, we do have newer people, so I guess I can, well. Pass wow. that Let me just do it this way. Uh, the first day of creation, well, he divided between the light and the darkness. So in that first dispensation with Adam in Genesis 2.16, he says, 
uh, L well, June, Genesis 2 and 7, he said he formed the man from the dust of the ground, breathed his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. And then in Genesis 2, 16 and 17, it says, And Yahweh Elohim command the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden you can freely eat, but the tree of knowledge, good and evil, don't eat for in the day, in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. The day that he eats thereof, he shall surely die. You'll read there in, 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 uh, in, in Genesis, the second chapter at the end, it says that the, the man, Adam, and his wife, Eve, or, you know, the man, the woman, they were in the garden. They were naked and not ashamed. Then when the devil went in there and deceived Eve, she ate, gave her husband. He did eat and said their eyes were open. And then what they did is they heard Yahweh, uh, the voice of Yahweh walking in the, in, the, uh, in the garden, and they hid themselves from Yahweh. They're afraid of Yahweh. They're hiding from Yahweh, and they covered their nakedness. Well, isn't that where they were naked and not ashamed? Now they're ashamed of their nakedness. Would that be a change in their mind? Yeah. So when Yahweh said in the daily truth of you shall surely die, they died in their conscience or soul that day. But you know what? That's what the other verse on that tombstone was, was uh, mm, Genesis 5 and 5. Read that. Genesis 5 and 5. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. Now, see, you'll say, well, see, uh, he said in the day that you eat thereof, you'll surely die. And they ate and they didn't die. Adam lived 930 years. Well, that's when you use those scriptures we was reading there that one day with Yahweh's is a thousand years. So if he dies at 930, he was 70 years short of one day, according to Yahweh. Now, that's, phys that's his physical death. But really, since he, uh, his communication was cut off from Yahweh, that's why he was cast out of the garden. is because he died in his conscience or soul. And he's the first son of Yahweh. Uh, you should have had the elementary chart for that. And, uh, and when he's being cast out, that's the sun going down. It's, uh, yeah, the elementary chart. See there? Uh, see, see he, he died in his conscience or soul that day because Yahweh said in the day that you dove, you'll surely die. Yahweh's spirit. So when he died, he died spiritually, but it was reflected 930 years. That's when he died physically. See, but that's one day of Yahweh as a thousand years. So he died spiritually that day, but it was reflected 930 years with his body. See, and so, and, and, and where we were in Psalm, and uh, you know, the average la lifespan of people are 70 years old. You know, that's in the Bible. You know why it's 70? Well, Psalms 90 and uh, 10 will say that he's given man three score and 10 scores uh 20 so three times 20 and 10 would be 70 well if you take a thousand and subtract 930 you get 70 okay so you're getting 70 years to live out the, the time adam didn't live that one day with yahweh i asked dr gill where he got that from he said dr kinley taught us that <laughs> yeah it's uh, okay um okay so uh the first day of creation he divided between the light and the darkness so adam they were light in the in the uh he was enlightened he was a living soul able to name the animals but when he died in his conscience that's his soul being darkened or died in a death state that's a division between light and darkness and then when you have the uh his uh, son cain killing abel and then going out to land of nod and you know having children that's like an under the uh that's an unrighteous lineage and then you have uh uh, uh seth and down to noah that's the, noah's the 10th generation enoch's the seventh from adam that's like unto a righteous generation 
the righteous generation, even though they're not righteous, but that's where the lineage of Yahshua Messiah comes from. And that's showing a division between light and darkness for the first thousand years. Okay. The second day of creation, he divided the waters above from the waters beneath. The second dispensation in the second thousand years of time, 1656 is when the flood happened. That rounds off to 2000. That's when the flood happened with Noah. The you know, waters above and the waters beneath. See, you see how one day is as a thousand years to Yahweh. The third day, the waters roll back and the dry land uh, and the seed of vegetation come forth. That's a resurrection on the third day. It's testifying to Yahshua Messiah resurrect on the third day. But what it's also showing is the third three thousandth year of time, which is the third dispensation. You got to go back and forth with the dispensation. That's what we're trying to show is the three day thousand years. So then the waters roll back off the earth in the third dispensation. And then he tells Abraham, I'll bless your seed as the stars of the heaven, sands and sea. So then you got the seed coming forth on the third day or the third dispensation. Fourth day of creation, you got the, the sun, the moon, and the stars. You understand? So the fourth dispensation, the 4,000th year of time, you got the law, which is the moon. The stars are like the prophets shining their lights. And then Yahshua Messiah comes in the 4,000th year of time. That sun appeared on the fourth day of Moses' vision to show you the only begotten son or Yahshua Messiah is going to come in the year 4,000. Exactly from Adam. One day with Yahweh is 1,000 years, 1,000 years. Is this one day? So that fourth day, that's Yahshua Messiah coming in in year four thousand. See, then the fifth day of creation, you have the birds, uh, the birds of heaven, and the fish in the sea. So in this fifth dispensation, after Yahshua Messiah's death, burial, resurrection, he pours out the Holy Spirit. And Romans eight and two says, "The law, the Spirit of life in Yahshua Messiah, hath made me free." See, and angels, birds are like an unto angels. You understand? They're free to fly in the in the heavens, what we call heavens, you understand, in the air. And then you have the fish, they're bound to the lake. Uh, they're bound to the waters. What's that represent? It's representing you don't believe, just like the, those angels were put in everlasting chains of darkness, you don't believe Yahshua, you're going to be bound to the lake of fire. You understand? Uh, uh, that's in the fifth age, but this fifth dispensation has a point of that. You understand? You don't believe Yahshua, you will go to the lake for that. Uh, that's why, you know, no, uh, John 8, 32, know the truth and the truth will make you free. See? Okay, on the sixth day, you had the beast form first, then the man was made last, right? Well, that's why in this sixth dispensation, all this false doctrine, because people used to say, Oh, 1931, that's real late. My church been around a long, long, long time. Yeah, because you that's a beast devouring people's soul. You understand? That's the beast form first. Then the man come in. He had a vision of revelation here in 1931. You understand? And then he took off the flesh just like Adam went down into a deep sleep. You understand? And now souls are coming in through the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua Messiah. See? Uh, so that's in the 6,000 years. And then the seventh day, Yahweh unrested. Well, the seventh dispensation is going to be the eternal rest. So that's one day of Yahweh is 1,000 years, 1,000 years. So now what we're going to show now is the 1,000 years is one day. So go to the Moses chart. See, because it said, beloved, that was Second Peter 3 and 8. Uh, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day of Yahweh is 1,000 years, and 1,000 years one day. Now, then we, we read that Pharaoh was like that great dragon, right? He said that in Ezekiel. Well, he's representing the beast man of sin. He's going against Yahweh. So Yahweh pours out 10 devastating plagues. And he said, in this very deed, I raise you up that I might show forth my power, that my name might be declared. So when, so when the, by a death of a lamb, uh, the cherub and Israel buried in the cloud in the sea, they resurrect through the waters of the Red Sea. Pharaoh and them tried to come in after them. They're trying to follow. The Israel, they're, they're being led by the angel in the cloud. They're in the light. They resurrect. But the Pharaoh and his host are following the flesh. You know, wanting the children of Israel to be their slaves. And Yahweh bust them asunder in the Red Sea. That was him being bound that day in the Red Sea. They died in the, in the flood. You, I mean, in the... <laughs> Well, it's like that. They died in the Red Sea. Uh, 
that's them being bound that day. Just like anybody that didn't get that, believe that, uh, believe that uh, ark to get in the ark during Noah's time, they were destroyed that day of the flood. You understand? But it's also representing, well, what it's really representing. I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a key to the bottom of his pit, a great chain in his hand, and he, and he laid hold of that dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. That's the day Yahshua Messiah resurrected. See, that's when he bound Satan that thousand years. Uh, see, Judas, uh, Judas had killed himself. So when Yahshua Messiah resurrected, did Judas resurrect? No. No, he's bound that thousand years, that day he resurrected. You understand? And that spirit also that was in Judas, he was in them scribes and Pharisees. But you might as well read that. Uh, okay, okay, we'll do it this way. Um, read uh, uh, Matthew 27, and I don't know, is it 63, 64, something like that. It's somewhere in the mm -hmm. 60s where it says that old deceiver said. 60 Matthew's uh, 2763. Okay, let's do it this way. Uh, read 2750. 2750. Sorry. 50. Yahshua, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yield up the ghost. Okay, so that's Yahshua dying. Now read 57. 57. When the even was come, there came a rich man of Armathia named Joseph, who also himself was Yahshua's disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Yahshua. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. And when Joseph had taken the body, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewed out in the rock. And he rolled a great stone to the door of the sepulcher and departed. And that so was you see, new. now that's Joshua being buried there, see? He rolled, he does a great stone and it's a, it's a tomb which no man had laid in. That's Joseph's new tomb. Well, you know, that's declaring the end from the beginning because when Yahshua, he was laid in, in, in Joseph's new womb and he had never been in there before, which never a man had laid was in Mary. You understand? She was mm -hmm. a virgin. Okay, declaring the end from the beginning. But anyway, so now he's buried. So that's a death and a burial. Now read 60, wherever we was, that 63, 64, was it? 63 of uh, Matthew's the 27th chapter saying, sir, we remember that the deceiver said while he was yet alive, after three days, I will rise again. Yes, yeah, so they're calling him a deceiver. Read on. Command, therefore, that the sufferer be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. Yeah, their last error is going to be worse than the first. The first error was to crucify him because he was the son of Yahweh. And then they don't want him to be resurrected because he said he's going to resurrect. They're calling him a deceiver. You understand? <laughs> okay. Now, so the <laughs> day that he resurrected, uh, read Matthew 27, 51 and 52. Because it's really kind of out of order there, uh, just because he didn't resurrect before he was buried. You understand? Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh, so read 51, uh, 2751. 2751. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the sons which slept arose and came out of the graves after the after his resurrection 
and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now that's Yahshua Messiah resurrecting on the third day. See, and he's the head and many of the bodies which slept arose and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's Yahshua Messiah resurrecting on the third day. And he's appearing unto many. Now they don't call him a deceiver, said he's going to resurrect on the third day. And when he resurrects on the third day, there, uh, that's, the, that's him uh, laying hold of that serpent and the dragon and the devil and bounding them a thousand years. That day, they didn't know what to do. You understand? Because, well, it said he appeared unto many. Let's find out how many. That's 1 Corinthians 15 and 5. Uh, you know, when we talk about the Gospels, how Yahshua died, buried, and resurrected again the third day, that's 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You know, uh, might as well, re well, I'll just quote it real quick. Uh, we, we, this, is the, this is the definition of the Gospel in the Bible. People don't know what the Gospel is. But it's defined in the Bible, in this verse, uh, this set of verses, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It says, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and wherein you stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Yahshua died for our sins, according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again. The third day, according to the scriptures. That's why we go back to the law and the prophets. It's all testifying to Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. Now read 15 and 5 there. And he and that he was seen of Cephas, and then of the twelve, and that he was seen of above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain until this present day, but some are fallen asleep. So you see where he saw they, that day? It said he appeared unto many. Five hundred saw him that day. Mm -hmm. and some of that's not right because it says he appeared on the Cephas that's Peter see and then the 12 well Peter's one of the 11 because Judas done killed himself you see how that you see how the Bible right. and we were taught it's by this vision revelation how the people ain't even got the numbers right you understand mm -hmm. but we're not doing that right now but what happened was they're they're bound that day uh, he now Judas is bound in the tomb. <laughs> he ain't resurrecting that day. And those scribes and Pharisees, they're bound. And we're going to read that later on in Revelation. That, well, I guess we'll read that later on. So, so that day that he resurrected, uh, they wasn't out there running their mouth that day. And Judas wasn't resurrected with them. You understand? It's those that believe on him. See, they went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Let's read Revelation 2 and 3. Uh, that's him laying, that day he resurrected is the thousand years in Yahweh's eyesight. That's the thousand years he took, laid hold of that serp, that, that, that great, that dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years. That's the day he resurrected. Read on. And we're going to prove it. We keep you said Revelation 2, 7. No, 20 and 3 now. No, oh, 20 and 3, okay. Back to 3. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should, de should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after so, that... Is that we still on the third verse? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. Now, after that, he's going to be loosed a little season. So it says he's going to be bound that thousand years and, and he's going to shut him up. Well, those scribes and Pharisees, after 500 seen Yash Messiah resurrected and all those souls are, rule, are in Jerusalem, you understand? And so many people saw that after his resurrection in a vision. Uh, they wasn't out there running their mouth that day. They called him a deceiver, you see. So they were shut mm. up. They didn't know what to do. So they spent the whole day trying to devise a lie. You understand? Trying to figure out what we're going to do. You understand? Then it says, and, ap and after that thousand years, he's going to be loosed a little season. What do you mean, a little season? Go to dispensation ages again. See, for 
see the devil ever since he lied to Eve in the uh, garden, he'd been working for 4,033 years till Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection. Mm -hmm. That's a long, that's a long time. You understand? Mm -hmm. Then, uh, and then after, after Yahshua resurrects and he shut them, the devil's mouth, you understand? They were always against him. They're the ones that crucified, him, you know, and, 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 uh, and, uh, there, he said he shall be after that thousand years that's after the day he resurrects he shall be loosed a little season well what's a little season well it's been 1900 years since that then that's a little mm -hmm. season compared to 4033 years ain't it mm -hmm. okay Re somebody's eating yeah lenore's out there eating we know when lenore's chomping on something i'm sorry it's, <laughs> it's, i'm sorry it's ice Okay, but oh. I got a, I've got a, I've got a question. I'm sorry. It says they cast him into the bottom of the pit and and shut him up, and set a seal upon him. What's the seal he set upon him? Well, the the seal is that he resurrected, and they're not going to believe that. They're going to devise a lie. That's what we're going to get there. Read hmm? uh, Matthew twenty eight eleven and twelve. Sorry. And go ahead and get the Moses chart there. Or it doesn't matter, I'm elementary plate, how, you show the death, burial, resurrection there. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, Matthew go ahead. 11? Yeah. 2811. Now, now, when they were going, behold, some of mind? the Yeah, okay, that's right. They were going, this is after Yahshua appeared to, uh, after his resurrection to the disciples and Mary. You understand, Mary and... Uh, well, Mary told him about his resurrection and so on. Now, now, as they were going, read. Now, when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priests all the things that were done. Now, now the when watch they, are those two soldiers that are down there standing there around where the tomb's at, see? And when, and when that angel rolled away the stone, those you see, they're 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 out like dead men there. You understand? And so now they're coming back to them scribes and Pharisees that 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 had them, you know, had them uh, set the watch to say so that so that they don't come and steal the, his body away. Hmm. And like and like Dr. Kidley said, uh, you know, they didn't steal Yahshua's body away. How do you know that? Because he's the son of Yahweh. And that physical sun we got in the sky is representing him. You see anybody try to steal that sun away? If you can't steal the physical sun, you didn't steal the spiritual sun. You understand what I'm saying? Or what, that's a really good point. It's too hot to handle and it's too far away, ain't it? <laughs> steal the sun out of the sky. So if you can't do that, you didn't do it out of the real son, which is Yahshua the Messiah, even his physical body. They didn't steal that. You understand? Uh, uh, so go ahead and keep reading there. Matthew 28, 12. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers, saying. Now they're taking, they're taking counsel. That's them being sealed up that day, that thousand years. Even, even the Roman soldiers, they ain't got no reason to lie. You understand? They're telling them, he resurrected. <laughs> you understand? Then they had the 500 uh, saw him at once. He resurrected. You understand? There's too many witnesses. They were shut up. He set a seal upon it. They're sealed in the, in the lie that they're going to tell about Yahshua. Mm -hmm. And so now they're going to pay large sums of money to those. Uh, keep reading. It says, and they gave them large and sons. When they were assembled, they had taken counsel. They gave large sons unto the soldiers, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. So they're so out there, they're out there paying those soldiers money to say. The disciple stole his body away while we were sleeping. And then, he, then and so you ain't, being a soldier, you ain't supposed to be sleeping on the job. How about that? And then they said, well, when, when you're, when you're, when you're a uh, leader, 
uh, say, we'll, 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 we'll talk to them and secure you so that you don't get in trouble for sleeping. And they're out there lying and they're paying money to lie to them. So that, you know, that's what's going on. You, people are, are, are getting, are paying these ministers to lie to people. You think they're going to stop lying? You're paying them to lie to you. Hmm. You understand? And, 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 and so it's the same principle. Is that what the satanic spirit does? He's a liar and he's out there, uh, and pays money to lie. You understand? Uh, okay, so that's the seal. And it says he'd be, she'd be loosed a little season. And as we said, he's loosed after that day he resurrected. They done told him uh, that he resurrected. And then, and then, but the scribes and Pharisees, and you can't tell them 500 that saw him in a vision that he didn't resurrect. But that's what they told the Apostle Paul. That's why he went out persecuting because they're preaching the resurrection. And Paul said, no, they didn't. The disciples stole his body away. And it wasn't until uh, it said that he saw a light from heaven above the noonday sun. Well, who's that? That's Yahshua the Messiah. He's the real begotten, only begotten son of Yahweh. He appears to Paul when he tells Paul knows now he resurrected because he appeared to him. And it changed his life, you understand? And it'll change your life when he resurrects and appears to you as the Holy Spirit, see? Uh, okay, let's read on in 20 and 4. 20 and 4 of Revelation. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahshua and for the word of Elohim, and which had not worshiped, neither had received his mark upon their forehead or in their hand. And they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. That the time that they're reigning, he said, I saw thrones. Well, in the most holy place, ain't you got the mercy seat? And that temple, sat on Mount Moriah as a throne. Remember, they went into the holy city and appeared unto many. So they're ruling Jerusalem that day. And judgment was given unto them. You're being judged whether you believe the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah or not. And he said he saw the souls. Didn't it, did it say souls? I think it said souls, didn't it? Yes. And, the souls and they saw them. the souls of them that had beheaded. Mm -hmm. Wasn't John the Baptist beheaded for the testimony of Yahshua? That's right. Weren't those guys killed for testifying to uh, Yahweh under the law? You understand? Through the law and the prophets. Yeah. Prophets were killed, see. Mm -hmm. Now that now they've resurrected, see, and they're ruling Jerusalem that day. They went into the holy city. You understand? And 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 and, and, and they're given witness and proven. The resurrection of Yah. That's a lot of witnesses, all those souls resurrecting. And then 500 saw them at once. You understand? And they lived and reigned with the Messiah a thousand years. That's one day with Yahweh. See how that's a great mystery? Read on. Read the next one. Is it with 20 and 5 now? Um, Revelation. Revelation 20 and 5. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. Now this it says, the but the rest of the dead live not again till after the thousand years were finished. Well, who's the rest of the dead? It's the disciples and man on the airplane. They're still carnal minded. They haven't received the Holy Spirit yet. They had to wait 50 days after the thousand years were fit. The thousand years is the day he resurrects, which is mm -hmm. April the 16th. And then they got to wait 50 days because he tarried on the airplane making spiritual appearances for 40 days. Mm -hmm. And then 40 days from April 16th, May 26th. And that's when he ascended. And then 10 days later, poured out the Holy Spirit. So it said the rest of the dead live not again till the thousand years were finished. They poured out the Holy Spirit 50 days after the day he resurrected, which is the thousand years. That's the rest of the dead live not again. And that's us in this age. Mm 
The rest of the dead live not again till the thousand years were finished. What does it say? What's the but next the part? Mm -hmm. blessed, blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. Okay, wait a minute. Is, is that the sixth verse? Yes, sir. Okay. So it said the rest of the dead did not again though the thousand years were finished. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power over them. And we were going over this yesterday a little bit uh, mm -hmm. because Dr. Kinley was doing it in the transcript there or in the lecture. Uh, <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. Okay, so those ones that resurrected with Yahshua, uh, they, they're the first ones to resurrect with him. They're in the first resurrection because they resurrected with him after his resurrection, right? Then the rest of the dead live not again. Those Because in Romans 8 and 6, it says to be carnally minded is death, mm -hmm. but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So he hadn't poured out the Holy Spirit yet, which is life unto their soul. And so they, the rest of the dead lived not again till the thousand years were finished. They, he poured out the Holy Spirit on them on the day of Pentecost. That's his disciples and those, you know, the 120 and then 3,000 were added that day by the preaching of the gospel. And then that's what began the age we live in. And that's still going on. Mm -hmm. So the first resurrection is the one, the resurrection of the souls that happened when he resurrected. And then the ones that have received the Holy Spirit, uh, uh, you know, so the rest of the day live not again till a thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy, he hath part in the first resurrection. So to say this hasn't happened yet, you're saying the resurrection hadn't happened. Hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. See how that's a major error? And it's only explained by this vision revelation. You don't have no church guy teaching you this. You understand? And Dr. Kinley's got it. That's what he has. Uh, uh, well, that's what he, he has. Matthew. Well, it's on the, it'll be on the elementary. Well, you see right there, it does have Revelation 118. And you see that it's supposed to be a key in his hand there. Uh, oh, I think if you blow it up there, I think it does have Revelation. Does that Revelation 20 there? I'm not sure. Uh, but I do know that on the uh, elementary chart, I mean, the Moses chart, he'll have under resurrection, he'll have uh, uh, this revel. Uh, read, uh, you see where it has the Revelation 20 and 6? Let's mm -hmm. hold it part of the first resurrection. You've got Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14. We've read the Matthew 27, 52. That's the earthquake and the bodies of the sons uh, 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 resurrected after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. See? Uh, and then you've got uh, Revelation 20 and 6 there. Um, and and uh, Lucy just said that that angel has 20 and 1 in there. At 26, the first read. Now read John 11, 25, and 26 and get the dispensation ages there with that. Sorry. John 11 and 25. You got to show the whole thing, Lenore, or whoever. John 11, 25. Yahshua said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now, what he's talking about is he's talking to uh, uh, Martha, I believe there. And what happened is Lazarus had been dead for four days and Yahshua Messiah resurrected. Or he's going to resurrect Lazarus from the dead after being dead four days. Well, why is he doing that? Because he's going to resurrect 4,033 years of soul. You see how he was, he resurrected Lazarus being dead four days to show that he's going to resurrect the souls of men that have been dead for 4,000 years. You see how the one day, if you always a thousand years, thousand years, one day. So when he says, I'm the resurrection life, 
he that believeth in me, though he were dead. See, they had been dead. Uh, and he's the resurrection of life, so they can't live without him. So he proved, he did resurrect Lazarus from the dead four days to show that he's going to resurrect man being dead for 4,000 years from the fall of Adam. And so when he resurrected that day, they resurrected with him. See, so that's, I'm the resurrection and the life. Uh, he that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Read on. And whosoever liveth, and, and believe, whosoever liveth, that's after the death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua, the rest of the dead, and whosoever liveth, read, and believeth in me shall never die. And believeth in me shall never die. Believest now, thou this? Believest thou this? Now he says, if you believe in him and you're living and believing on him, you will never die. Well, that's not physically. Because if it was physically, then all them brothers that got the Holy Spirit, they'd still be walking around. We'd be talking to 2,000-year-old men, wouldn't we? <laughs> but what it's showing is that after his death, when you get resurrected in your heart and mind, mm -hmm. and that's why we, you know, we've made this statement in the school uh, that says, uh, if you die, if you're, if you're born once, you're going to die twice. And if you die, if you're born twice, you're going to die once. See, you, we were all born physically. So that's being born once. And you will die physically. And the second death, we read that. That's Revelation 20, 14, and 15. Because we just read that if you had part of the first resurrection, the second death hath no power on you. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the second death? Read 20, 14, and 15. 2014 of Revelations, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So it and said death and hell, and that's what we stopped off yesterday on. <laughs> death and hell uh, was cast into the lake of fire. This is the sec that is the second death. So if you've been resurrected in Yahshua, it said the second death hath no power over you. That means you're not that means you were born again. So you're born, you born physically. Now you're born of the Holy Spirit. That's, that's being born twice. You'll only die once. You, the second death or the, the lake of fire hath no power over you. Your soul is saved. You have eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah. See, so he says, which is the second death. Read, read on there. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Now, why ain't you in the book of life? Because you've been blotted out. Hmm. And that's what, well, we'll have to get that. <laughs> we, can't finish, we can't do that today because we've run out of time. Uh, but uh, read, uh, read that 26 again. And then uh, I think that's about as far as we're going to get. We might try to read seven a little bit and see what happens. Revelation 26. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such, the second death hath no power. But See, they the lake have, of fire, you ain't going to no lake of fire. You have eternal life. The lake of fire is eternal damnation. You've mm -hmm. been saved through by Yahshua. Through the, you've been saved from the wrath of Yahweh, which is the lake of fire, through Yahshua the Messiah. See, read. But they shall be priests of Elohim and of the Messiah and shall reign with him a thousand years. Yeah, uh, read on. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And See, Satan's gonna be loosed after that day he resurrected. Satan's gonna be loosed from, his, he just overturns it. He's gonna be mm -hmm. loosed from his prison. They were in prison because they're, he resurrected that day and they're against him. They've called him a deceiver. And now they're paying the soldiers money lie to tell them they stole his body away. You understand? So now he's loosed. And he's out there and, been, and he's been lying. You know, he's been lying ever since. You ain't going to have no physical thousand years where he's going to be uh, not deceiving. You understand? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's never happened in the history of the world. And it ain't going to happen. Because it's, it's, a, it's a great mystery of Yahweh that that thousand years is the day he resurrected. See, uh, so but he says he shall be loose from his prison, and he and we know he's loose because who's raising all the hell around here, huh? Mm -hmm. 
this world, I mean, it's really crazy what the devil's doing out here. You understand? Uh, I mean, uh, what calls it a little young? He's an 18 year old. 18 is 666. Drive three and a half hour, uh, hours to Buffalo, New York to kill black people. And he, and he puts a 180 page manifesto, which he really plagiarized. 180, that's 6662. You understand? I ain't really looked at it any more than that. But that's satanic, of course. You understand? You don't, resp you, you think you're better. Anyway, it's a mess. And what you see in Ukraine and all that kind of stuff. I mean, uh, yeah. uh, anyway, uh, to, uh, that's the devil when he don't respect your physical life. And you sure don't respect eternal life through Yahshua the Messiah. We know that. And um, that's the devil's job is to lie, cheat, and steal. You understand? And that's what he does. And, and murders people's souls by preaching false doctrine. So uh, we've run out of time. Uh, 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 so we got, uh, well, we got a few verses there in the 20th chapter. And if you learn anything, you thank Yahweh Elohim to his son, Yahshua Messiah. This is the greatest teaching on the earth, and it's worth you investigating. So all praise go to Yahweh Elohim to his son, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, we had up to 57 participants today. We thank everyone that came out to study with us. We hold classes Tuesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 12 noon Eastern Standard Time, 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 p.m to 1 a.m. in Malaysia and 3 p.m. to 5 p.m. in London, England. Um, uh, our doxology is taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, Belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time, now and ever. Let us all say together, Hallelujah! 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahshua! Yeah. Praise Yahshua Messiah! Yeah. Beautiful class! Yeah. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yeah. Definitely beautiful. Hallelujah! Dr. Hallelujah. Dr. Maria, Dr. I mean, Dr. Uh, Lucy, Dr. Lucy. Yes. <laughs> 